John Milton, Abraham Lincoln, and Xerox are all on this day. Welcome back to On This Day. Today's date is April 27th, 2022. It is the 117th day of the year. There's 248 days left. It is the 17th Wednesday in the 18th week and the 39th day of spring. You got 55 days until summer. If it's your birthday, you're still a Taurus. Today is World Tapir Day. Every year on April 27th, World Tapir Day aims to create a community around tapir awareness and conservation. What does a tapir look like and what is it? That's an animal. And it looks like a pig that's got a trunk, sort of like an anteater's trunk, a little bit. Some people refer to them as boar crossed with an anteater. However, tapirs aren't related to any of those animals. Instead, they're related to horses and rhinos. They can weigh over 600 pounds and tapirs are the largest land mammals in South America. This herbivore also lives in Central America and Southeast Asia. I've seen one uh, before in the wild when I was in uh, Central America. Uh, it was a lot smaller than I don't see how this thing could have got up to 600 pounds. If this thing was 80 pounds, I would have been shocked, but apparently it can get up to 600 pounds. It was a distance, but still. All right, let's see what else April 27th has given us. 1667, blind and impoverished, John Milton sells Paradise Lost to a printer for 10 pounds sterling so that A, he could eat, and B, he could be entered into the station's registers. This is an epic poem that is considered a classic. It's a work of art, and he sold it for 10 pounds sterling because he was broke. Now, to put it in perspective, that was about $2,600 in today's money. I am not a poetry guy, but I read that, I don't know, senior year in high school and it was so good I read it like 10 different times and I don't like poetry that's not my thing the Ravens like the only other poem I ever liked 1861 American President Abraham Lincoln suspends the writ of habeas corpus Now, the writ of habeas corpus, in case you don't know, this basically is a civil liberty. I'm just going to broad brush it here. This is what stops the government from arresting you for any reason whatsoever. They got to have a reason to arrest you. They have to have a reason to keep you locked up. If someone suspends the writ of habeas corpus, that means they can just start collecting people. Now, Abraham Lincoln had done this a couple times during his administration. The Civil War was going on, and it was mainly to deal with saboteurs. When they were trying to get Union forces into Washington, D.C. to defend the nation, capital, they had a lot of people that were sabotaging bridges and tearing up rail lines so they couldn't get people in there. So he basically first suspended the writ of habeas corpus there so that anyone near the railroad tracks could just be arrested by the soldiers. Everyone was told to stay away from the tracks. And if you were found there, you were just arrested because they had to assume you were there to sabotage the tracks. So Normally, this is not something any government wants to do. A lot of dictators will do this. They'll just, whatever their version of, you know, the laws governing how people are arrested, they'll just get rid of them because they don't like those rules and they want to get rid of people that are, you know, opposed to what they're doing. Lincoln at least went to Congress. He had the right during wartime to just do this, but he went to Congress and basically said, look, we have these liberties, but right now in the situation we're in, the whole system of government can collapse if we don't take some measures. So he actually communicated with Congress and they went back and forth about it and he finally had to suspend the writ of habeas corpus. Now, technically, by doing this, he had the right to do it throughout the whole North or the United States, whatever it was at that time. There was civil war going on. But on April 27th, 1861, Lincoln suspended the writ of habeas corpus between Washington, D.C. and Philadelphia to give the military authorities the necessary power to silent dissenters and rebels. They were having a big problem with that. I mean, it's a civil war. Under this order, commanders could arrest and detain individuals who were deemed threatening to the military operations. 1911, following the resignation and death of William P. Fry, a compromise is reached to rotate the office of President Pro Tempore of the United States Senate. 1967, Expo 67 officially opens in Montreal, Quebec, Canada. With a large opening ceremony broadcast around the world, it opens to the public the very next day. 1978, John L. Rickman, a former aide to U.S. President Richard Nixon, is released from the Federal Correctional Institution in Safford, Arizona, after serving 18 months for Watergate-related crimes. You know, I always get angry when... I read about Watergate, and then I see, you know, what's been going on in our own government right now. It's just follow the frickin' rules. You know, I don't care who you think broke the rules in this last one, or how you saw Watergate, whatever. It's, we have laws, we have rules, people win, people lose. Don't risk everyone's way of life to gain power or stay in power, however you see it. We have an incredible society that just needs to keep going without any speed bumps. 
1981, Xerox introduces the computer mouse. Then they pretty much hand it over to Steve Jobs, so to speak. Jobs first encountered the mouse on a visit to Xerox in 1979. Xerox allowed him and his team from Apple to look at new technologies being developed in exchange for giving Xerox the chance to buy 100,000 shares of Apple at $10 a piece. Steve Jobs kind of focused in on the mouse. All the things they had working on, he saw the mouse as the future of computing, that they could actually go around the computer and click things instead of having to type things in. The problem was the Xerox mouse he thought was complicated. It had three buttons at the time and it cost about $300 a piece. This is in 1979 too. That's a lot of money. It's a lot of money right now. The one that Xerox had didn't really move around too smoothly and it had to be on a certain type surface. So he went to a designer named Dean Hovey, I think that's how you pronounce his name, and he asked him to make one, a simple one button model that costs around $15. They did. One of his things was he wanted it to roll smoothly on any surface, from Formica to blue jeans. In 1983, Apple released the Lisa computer. It was the first commercial computer with a graphical interface and a mouse. 1992, Betty Boothroyd becomes the first woman to be elected Speaker of the British House of Commons in its 700-year history. 2005, Airbus has the first test flight of the A380 aircraft. 2007, Israeli archaeologists discover the tomb of Herod the Great south of Jerusalem. Movies released on April 27, 2018, we got Infinity War. This was the third installment of the Avengers franchise. It sees the super team join forces with the Guardians of the Galaxy and just, it was insane. Such a good series of movies. Broke my heart when it kind of came to an end, but now I guess they're having a 2.0 version or something like that. According to Marvel, there are over 60 main characters in that film. The film marks the 10th anniversary of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Born on April 27th, 1951, Ace Freely, guitarist and vocalist for the heavy metal band Kiss. I don't think they're heavy metal. It's rock and roll. Anyway, they says they're uh, heavy metal here, so we're going with it. He is known for hits like I Want to Rock and Roll All Night. He's released music as a solo artist, but never anything near what he did with Kiss. His nickname is the Spaceman or Space Ace. If you remember, Kiss wore makeup on stage always, and they were in character. You know, Gene Simmons was the demon, then you had the Catman or whatever his name was, and Ace Freely looked like a star child type thing. He was all silver and black and had like stars on his face. Interesting time in rock and roll music. Died on April 27, 2002, Ruth Handler. You may not know who she is, but she was the president of Mattel Incorporated. She was best remembered for her part in the creation of the Barbie brand. Yes, she created Barbie. She started Mattel with her husband using manufacturing scraps to produce dollhouses. Her first bestseller toy was called a Yuki a Doodle, which was a toy ukulele. So when Barbie first came out, she was the first doll with curves. I mean, she had breasts, basically, and everyone was a uproar about this and it was a big to do and you know people were gonna boycott Mattel everything else they just you know it's the 60s or whatever and that's how things were sadly Ruth got breast cancer and and had a radical mastectomy after that she was really dissatisfied with the breast prosthesis they had so she created a company that made more realistic ones she was married to Elliot Handler from 1938 until her death in 2002 now get this her kids names were Kenneth and Barbara. They were the inspiration for her dolls. Ken and Barbie. All right, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Now go out, have a productive day, be nice to each other.